you don't want your videos to have lousy audio, right? I can't hear you! That's why you need to learn how to have good audio in your videos. I'll show you some simple tips that will make your audio sound awesome. Awesome! You'll learn how to choose the right microphone, how to set up your audio levels, and how to avoid common mistakes. Trust me, these tips are easy and effective. So, let's get started. Hey Rebel Filmmakers, Reynaldo Cantu here. Welcome to the channel where you can find techniques and tutorials about how to make good videos with no budget. Let's get started. I had a bad experience once when I recorded a video in a location that I was unfamiliar with. Everything looked fine when I got there, I finished the shooting, but when I got home and reviewed the footage, the audio was terrible. There was so much background noise from the air conditioning, even though we were indoors, I could hear the cars passing by. And besides that, the reverb from the room was horrible. That's why before you start recording your videos, you should choose a location that has good sound conditions. Avoid places that have a lot of ambient noise, such as traffic, wind, or people talking. If you are indoors, turn off any fans, refrigerators, air conditioners, or other devices that make constant noises that can ruin your recording. You should also watch out for the reverb in the room, cause it can make the audio hard to understand. Trust me, you will avoid a lot of trouble with this simple tip. So what microphones to use for video? You may have heard that everyone has a perfect match. Well, the same goes for microphones. There are different types of microphones, but not all of them work well for the same recording conditions. I basically reduced them to the three most important types of microphones. If you are going to do an interview in a close place where there's not much ambient noise or it is one person speaking on camera, use the lavalier. This microphone has the advantage of being able to be placed very close to the person who speaks like this. So usually you can hear the voice very clearly and loudly. When placing it on the person you have to take care that it does not rub with the clothes or hair so that it does not generate noises when the person moves. In fact, I have a video on how to hide the microphone under the clothes and avoid noise. Find the link in the description of this video. I remember a time when I was starting out and I made a huge mistake when using labeler microphones. I had to record an interview with a group of people who had an interesting story to share. I thought I was ready, but I was wrong. I only had two lavalier microphones with me, and there were more than two people on screen. Big mistake. I didn't know what to do. How could I record the audio for everyone who appeared on camera? That's the downside of using lavalier microphones. You need to have enough microphones for everyone who appears on camera. Another thing that you need to be aware of is the type of lavalier you use. If you use a wired one, make sure the person on camera stays still because they will have limited mobility. If you use a wireless one and you are recording outdoors, you might face signal interference. Luckily, I had a backup plan for that situation. I had another type of microphone that is great for outdoors recordings, such as dialogue for a short film or an interview with multiple people on screen. I'm talking about the shotgun microphone. This microphone has the benefit of locking out the sound from the sides and focusing on what is in front of it, eliminating the background noise. They are also more sensitive to pick up sound from far away. They're called shotgun microphones because they work like a shotgun. They only catch the sound you're aiming at. But remember, you need to mount the microphone on a boom pole so that you can move it closer to the speaker without it being seen on camera. This is one of the best microphones in my opinion because you can use it for almost anything. Interviews, video blogs, dialogues, and even voiceovers. If what you want is more like a microphone for voiceovers or a podcast, a condenser microphone or studio microphone is the best option. These microphones have a high audio quality, especially for voice recording. These microphones require you to place them very close to your mouth to get a good sound quality. That's why they are more suitable for post-production than on-camera use, unless you want them to be visible. About this, let me give you one tip. For studio microphones, use a pop filter to prevent the noises of breathing or popping. <laughs> When you speak, for outdoor recordings, use a windscreen or a dead cathary cover to reduce the wind noise. If you're liking this information so far, please like this video. When I stutter, I made a big mistake. 
big mistake that still haunts me. I knew about the different types of microphones, but I didn't check the sound quality. I recorded everything with either too low or too high sound levels, and it was a nightmare to fix it later. Oh, <gasps> what a nightmare! I don't want you to go through that. So here's my tip. Always, and I mean always, keep your sound level between 9 and 12 dB. If your recorder is too low, you'll get a lot of noise when you edit the audio. And if it's too high, you'll clip the audio if someone speaks, shouts, or laughs too loud. Remember this, between 9 and 12 dB is the sweet spot. For the best sound quality, I suggest using an external recorder. These devices have higher recording quality and allow you to adjust the audio levels more quickly. Also, if you use a shotgun microphone, for example, you can detach it from the camera and place it closer to the speaker. For the best audio quality, use XLR cables and connectors for your recorder and microphone. This type of connector gives you the the advantage of using longer cables without affecting the sound quality. You can also use microphones with 3.5 mm mini plug connectors, but only if you plug them directly to the recorder. The drawback of this is that you can't use extension cables to increase the connection distance because this type of connector tends to pick up interference or noise. And remember, always use headphones to monitor your recordings and make sure there are no interferences or unwanted external sounds and that the sound is clear and loud enough. And the two most important tips that I'm gonna give you in this video. Never use the built-in microphone of your camera since they are usually of very poor quality. Some cameras may have better built-in microphones than others, but in general, they are not good enough for professional audio quality. Besides, you will also capture all the noises that the camera makes which will ruin your audio. Always use an external microphone. And the most crucial tip that I'm gonna give you is the distance in which you place the microphone is very important, no matter what type or quality of microphone you use. I learned this lesson the hard way when I started. Hey, knock it off. I had the best microphone that I could afford back then, but everything sounded awful because I placed the microphone too far away. Please don't cry. The sound was barely audible and the reverb was terrible. Always try to put your microphone as close as you can to the source of sound, whether it is the person who speaks, the instrument, etc. The closer you are, the clearer and louder the sound will be. Any microphone, good or bad, will improve its performance if it is close to the source. Below I leave you links to models of recorders and microphones that I recommend. And uh, if you want to be a better filmmaker, you should watch this other video that appears on camera, okay? My name is Reynaldo Cantu, and I'll see you in the next Rebel Filmmakers video.